In the last episode, I was attempting my first flight with my self-built electric paramotor, using only two drone motors. Unfortunately, the flight ended with some smaller damage on the prop and on the duct. In my other video, I already explained what happened, but I didn't really explain why it happened in the first place. So, here's my further analysis. The first issue was the power. My calculations were based on this chart, which used a 12S setup, just as I did. The difference, though, was that my batteries had a much higher voltage sag, meaning the voltage drop under load. This resulted in a smaller voltage and thus a smaller amperage supply, which ultimately means less power. Precisely, only 90% of the charts shown max. The power calculations were already on the weaker side, so having even less than the calculation made it obviously even harder. The second issue had to do with the setup. The main pro of the setup is that it is probably the only paramotor setup that has actually zero torque because of the two counter-rotating propellers. Typical paramotors try to minimize this effect through different methods. The most common one is to offset the swing arm slightly to one side to counter the pulling effect that is felt through the spinning prop. I am currently using such swing arms for my setup, which now actually have the exact effect they are supposed to eliminate as my paramotor doesn't produce any torque. As you can see, the offset of the swing arms is to the right, meaning it automatically weight shifts to the left. That's why I was also drifting to the left slightly. Since I already spent so much on the project, I went into the second fly with the same setup, but this time I knew what to look out for. Next, it's time to get this thing into a flyable state again. A friendly RC plane veteran said he could help me fix the prop. To fix the damage, he built up the missing part by mixing up little carbon fiber strands with epoxy and carefully building up the missing part. After everything was cured, he sanded it down, checked that it was properly balanced and it was good to give it a test spin. In the meantime, I ordered some fresh fiberglass and it just arrived so I can fix the broken duct as well. Okay, I just checked the weather for tomorrow, it looks decent enough to fly, so I will load everything in right now and hopefully tomorrow will be the day.
The flight ended shorter than expected when I suddenly noticed that one of the straps came loose and reached the prop. So the strap got at least a fresh haircut now. Besides that and the muddy landing, I was quite happy with the flight and luckily nothing else got chopped off. Later on I checked the stats and saw that I had a constant power consumption of 3.5 kilowatts for each motor or 7 kilowatts for an average altitude gain of 0.3 meters or 1 foot per second, which is definitely worse when comparing it to the SP140, also a fully electric paramotor. Last year I did a flight with the SP140 when it was around the same temperature and same altitude and got an average altitude gain of 0.8 meters per second or 2.5 feet per second. It makes sense that the SP140 is more efficient as generally speaking, the larger the area is, a propeller covers while spinning, the better its efficiency. Precisely one square meter for the dual setup versus 1.5 square meters for the SP140. One pro for the dual setup was definitely the absence of any felt torque effect, which made it more pleasant than on the SP140 or any other single prop paramotor. I'm looking forward to experiment more with the setup, but that's it for this episode. Until the next one, bye.